much for coming here. It's very nice to see everyone here. And thank you for, thanks to Solidity Singapore for organizing this event. And today, okay, today I'm going to talk about infrastructure because that's what we do. I'm from Chainstack. My name is Wu Zhong. I'm a developer advocate. So I talk to people, I talk to developers, non-developers, talk about Web3 infrastructures, Web3 technologies. In general, so I help people to move forward uh, with their Web3 journey. So that's what I do. And so today, my slide is all about infrastructure. So many people know about DeFi, GameFi, but not many people understand the infrastructure behind all the Web3 technologies, Web3 fancy. So, okay, let me do a survey here. So you don't need to raise your hand, just knock your head or, or shake your head, it's fine. How many of you heard about Infura? Infura? Infura, okay, that's it, oh, okay. Uh, alchemy? 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 Almost everyone, okay. Chance deck. <laughs> ah, before today. Before today? Oh, <laughs> that, thank you very much. Okay, so we are basically doing the same thing. We are no, we will provide infrastructure uh, for Web3 apps. So in general, when we talk about infrastructure, what we are talking about? Uh, blockchain, unlike Web3, I'm sorry, Web3, unlike Web2, there are multi-month nodes in, a, in the network, and then all the nodes, they talk to each other to reach consensus. So in order to join the network, to join the fund, you need to have a node to be part of that. You can, of course, you can set up a node by yourself, or you can use a node provider like Chainstack. And I'm sorry, we provide more tools than nodes. So <clears throat> I will talk about that later. So, for example, if you want, you, if you want to sign a transaction uh, into the network, so basically what you do is just you send an RPC, uh, you, talk, you send an RPC request to one of the nodes, and then the node will broadcast into the network, and then slowly it will be picked up by a validator, and the validator uh, finalize the block, put it into a block, and tra traverse the block uh, towards all the nodes in the network, and eventually, uh, all the states in all the nodes will be updated. So basically, what we do is we provide one, one of the nodes for people to access the network. So the main point is hosting a node is not a very easy job. It's not the easiest job. I'm taking uh, Ethereum as an example. So there are multiple kind of nodes. They are Gav. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Ethereum, but Ethereum is the most widely used uh, Web3 uh, blockchain. So they are Gas, they are Aragon, they are Nethermine. So all of all the nodes. So if you are a Web3 developer, you don't need to choose one of the nodes. You can choose different kind of nodes. As long as the consensus works, it will work. But different nodes, they are, have different strengths within themselves. Gas is very stable. And Aragon is magical. It has a lot of uh, way more uh, capability than gas, but it's not as stable as gas. So that's one example. And so, and actually, gas is the most stable node that our company hosts. Then there are other nodes. And to host the gas node, so this is the basic requirement. Uh, you need a, so if you run it on uh, uh, AWS, you need a CPU, you need RAM, 15 gigabytes, and the storage is, uh, is quite, it's, it's demanding, because as a blockchain, you keep a uh, produce block and a receive block and update a state, so actually you need a very powerful storage uh, in a node. So, and an internet connection, which, uh, so this is for gas, and for, for some other high throughput nodes like Solana, like Polygon, and Binance, the requirement just increase based on the throughput. And actually, we have some problem with Solana on AWS because the infrastructure on AWS is not able to handle 
the throughput or the request coming in from Solana. So we have to use a uh, bare metal. So we set up our own server just for the Solana network. So that's one of the challenge if you want to set up a node by yourself. So try not to consider that. And this is a cost to set up a node by yourself. For Ethereum, oh, do you know the difference between full node and archive node? Everyone knows? Everyone knows? Okay, okay. So for the full node for Ethereum, uh, it's 900 per month. If the archive node is double, it's almost double for all of them. Uh, Polygon, full node per month, 1600. Binance, 1500. And Binance, uh, the archive node is, is very costly because there are a lot of like historical data on BSC. And for Aptos, uh, 280 US dollars. So, so that's about it. So, and the, the challenge in blockchain infrastructure, just imagine that you are building a DAP by yourself, you're building a DeFi. And when the user base grows, you have more people using your DAP from all over the world, and your node is basically in, let's say starting in, in the US. They will receive complaints from customers from Japan. Complain about latency, about uh, a transaction failure. And you're thinking about maybe we should start setting up a, a node uh, in Japan, and slowly in Europe, in Asia, Southeast Asia. And eventually, one day you realize that, okay, one of the nodes needs to be updated, and that interrupts our service. So we need to set up a backup node. And eventually, you need more backup nodes, and then you need to uh, have a hybrid hosting because you don't want to put everything into gas. You want Aragon, just in case gas fails. Uh, so that's eventually that you realize that, okay, this is too much. And you will need a team to handle all the requests, and the blockchain nodes break all the time. Believe me, I'm, I'm, we are infrastructure provider, we know that. So, uh, so let's say, if you meet me, so let's say today I'm not working for Chainstack, I'm working for crypto job list. And you meet me at a coffee shop. You ask me, Wu Zhong, do you, do you think I should host a node by myself? My suggestion is no, don't do that. Don't do that, just use a node provider. No chance that is fine. If you're out, can make a quick note. But try not to host a note by yourself. Try to leave uh, the job to the experts, right? <clears throat> so here we go, Chase Deck. It's my company. We provide uh, no service. Currently, we have more than, uh, we, we support more than 24 protocols. 24, right? 24, yeah. <laughs> because the number keep growing. So uh, starting this year, it was less than 20, like 18. And now we have 24 protocols. There are multiple clouds. We are in uh, Europe, uh, America, Asia. So basically all, all around the world. So, and we have multiple uh, cloud providers. So we are partners with AWS, uh, Google, and Azure, and Avatar also. And we, we also have our own servers. So our own chain stack cloud. So that's what we do. But apart from that, we do actually more. We provide other uh, full suites for people to use the Web3. Do you know IPFS? Anyone knows IPFS? IPFS? Uh, okay, oh, almost. Uh, so we, ho we have uh, IPFS hosting service. We also have subgraph hosting. So subgraph basically is an indexing service, indexing technology for blockchain data. So yeah, and any questions? Any questions? Yes, please. I'm always curious about like among all the nodes providing services, what are the key differences? Because there are so many players and it's hard for users to ever think about what different nodes are like. Yes. So that's actually a very excellent question. So as so a node providers, we don't build a node by ourselves. You don't see a chain stack Ethereum. Or in fewer Ethereum. So we use the same uh, open source code. So gas is gas, Aragon is Aragon. Even though we talk to them, we talk to the, uh, the devs between, uh, behind the scene uh, who build uh, gas and Aragons. We give them feedback, what we need, and uh, some special configuration. So, but it's, just, it's the same set of code. 
the, the difference that you can consider uh, is the uh, price. I'm not sure if I should say this, but we are very cheap. And the AK is coming to me. <laughs> We're also very transparent. Because if you go like uh, quick now, they are out there, probably in pure as well. Would you be able to, to, to tell, just looking at their pressure by using them, how much your request is not going to cost you? Because they have, you know, stuff like complicated stuff similar to like AWS and the other clouds that have credits that you need to use to consume. <clears throat> when you do a request, they know that you consume the credit. So, you, you know, if it's a very heavy call, like a debug call, for example, debug or trace call, then it's going to consume, consume a number of credits in there that are going to end up costing you more. With chase tech, one request is always one request. So, you know, you, you just consume an amount of money. So it's very, very easy. Thank you. So, yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, I only talk about one part. Okay. That's uh, that's the price, and also the node distributions, and also the uptimes. But we are it's a it's a very uh, crowded space. So we are all competing at the same level. So there's not much uh, differentiation between us. But you can try it. Yeah? You can try uh, all of us. Oh, by the way, we have a developer plan starting uh, with no cost, with three million free requests. Everyone can try that. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I was still in Pura. Yes. Uh, last year, they got into some uh, big question because they collect data on uh, users to set up systems. Do yes. They collect data well, no, because we don't have MetaMask. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's actually the Infra side. Right? Yes, and I, I think that's actually uh, collect true MetaMask. Uh, the yeah, IP address, true, right? Right? yes, true. yes. We have to be using the RPC. Yes. Yes, but that's for MetaMask. Actually, for no providers. Uh, the first of all, we don't. So we. So if you know, like how transaction was propagated or was sent into the uh, blockchain, it's all uh, encrypted and anonymous. And like, oh, at most we can know is your uh, public address. And other, all the other stuff are transparent. So like, there's no point uh, to hide anything else. And we don't collect the uh, IP address as well. Yeah. And there's no, no way we can associate IP address with, uh, with your public uh, address. So yeah. yeah. This gentleman. So in the costs, you said that running a node on public cloud would be what? This one. Yeah. Okay, so this is the price if you want to host the Ethereum node by yourself on AWS. Right. Okay, so basically we have two kind of services. We have Elastic Node and uh, Dedicated Node. So Dedicated Node is something very similar to this. We host a node for you to access, and that's on AWS, or like a, any cloud provider that you choose. For Elastic Node is, uh, just imagine like everyone is access to the super server. So that's what we do. But actually behind, it's, it's a more complicated than technology. So actually behind one, uh, one uh, endpoint, there are multiple servers, and one of them is down, uh, you, you can be redirected to other servers. So something like that. Yeah, so for our chargers, we charge by request for Elastic Nodes. So uh, there are different, Plans, but in general, very very general, one million requests cost about ten U.S. dollars, oh. and that's very cheap. I, I mainly want to say chain stack is cheap. But if, you want, <laughs> if I want a dedicated node on chain stack, it would be whatever AWS charges plus your merchant. No, we don't charge extra for that. So you'll be around the same price. So we have a we have the price for this, but it won't be more costly than you host by yourself. So the secret behind this is like we are partners with them. So yeah, 
that's all I can say. <laughs> but you won't be more expensive than your host by yourself. Yeah. Any other question? Yes. The validator rewards. What happened to the validator rewards? Like, would I get it? Oh. Because I'm, I'm a validator now, I'm a right? So, I think I have to have a So, would you return that to me back? You, you want to start? <laughs> we don't run validator nodes. So, it's a very good question. Uh, we are not contributing to a centralized one. We feel a network, something that you know a lot of people think about and they think not right, they are not doing that. But we're contributing to you just run full node or pay node. Basically, a stride as it may sound because we're contributing to blockchain adoption, right? Because everybody wants to <coughs> be able to access the network, but you are not providing the nodes that secure the network, like validating nodes. You're only providing nodes that let you access the network and you know, do all your you know, development stuff, like debug calls and pay trouble. So we don't do staking. But uh, I thought if you want to set up a stake now, you have to provide your wallet address, right? Don't you? I think we'll be going to that. I don't know. It's beyond my, because we don't do it. So <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. One more question. Yes, please. So AWS hosting a full node, 900 US dollars. But for 900 US dollars, you can buy a computer that can run a series of nodes with like a room to grow. Yes. Uh, do you consider running your own hardware? Because this seems to be very expensive to this. So that's what we do with Solana. So we decided to run Solana by ourselves. Uh, but for Ethereum, the good thing about uh, AWS, first of all, uh, you need to, so if you want to, because you, if you set up in Singapore, it's only in Singapore. But it, yeah, it's, you, it can be distributed across the, uh, the, uh, the world. And uh, other than that, all the depreciation for your laptop and all the network, because if you want to run a, run a node, uh, you need an SSD, which is uh, like a thousand bucks. Something like that? I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, you, of course you can run a node by yourself. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Okay. My telegram. Just in case you Oh you can just talk to me afterwards. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy the night. Thank you. Thank you.